All right, so in the previous video, I set up the project so we could get into the code in this video. Hold on just one second. I am offering free coaching to those of you who need help in JavaScript development, Flutter development, and most front end or full stack JavaScript frameworks. If you're not opposed to receiving some help, message me through Discord at 8 Dang. I'll be sure to include my tag below, but remember, I might not be able to help with everything, but I'll try my best. But with that out of the way, let's get back into the video. So let's get it straight into the code. In the source folder, you see the lib folder. Let's delete this index.cs file. And then let's create a new file in here called main.css. All right, so at first, we're going to import the font from Google Font. Then we're going to apply that font to everywhere and apply the text color to everyone. So then let's create a body tag. And if you want, you could create a light mode, but I saw that the light mode was a little bit broken with the font and the coloring of the code snippet. So if you guys want to, you can include it. But for the rest of this course, I'm not going to use the light mode. So let's apply some styles to the body and let's also set the CSS variables, primarily the color scheme, like the primary color, the secondary color, and so on. These two, these three are basically for the containers and buttons and the text colors, well, for text. And right here, you can find the GitHub link down in the description with all this code, but I basically copied the styles for my style of code that I like. So then we could close this file. And in the lib folder, let's create a new file called types.ts. All right, so once you created this file, let's create the user type that includes the email, ID, name, and the bio. These are essentially all of the field data that we created in the previous video for the setup. And let's create a validate user function that validates to see if this user or if the data that we're parsing is actually a user. Now let's create a post. And these are essentially the fields that we created in the previous episodes for the post documents. And let's validate the post. And this is a big function, so... Essentially, we check if the strings are strings. We validate the user. So we use this validate user function that I created right here. We check to see if the tags are actually valid. So if it's an array and if each item of the array is a string, we also check if the likes is valid. So essentially, we're checking every single property that is required for the post and validating to see if they're the correct types and if they are actually valid. So then we can close this file now. And here, in the lib folder, we could create one last file called pocketbase.ts. And we could close this right here. So then once you're in the pocketbase.ts file, let's export a new constant called pb. Let's set it to a writable. And it's basically going to be a type of pocket base or undefined. And now let's check to see if, if we're actually in the browser. So if we're in the server, we're just going to return. We're not going to run any logic for the pb. But if we are in the browser, we're going to create an instance of pocket base. And we're going to load it. We're going to load the all store from the cookie that we have stored. And we're going to set the pocket base instance to this writable. And let's just import right here. So now we can close this file. So once you have the app.d.ts open, let's import pocket base. And then let's set the interface for the locals, which basically the locals is the data that we're going to pass from the hooks into the functions. So we're going to add, we're going to enter a pocket base instance. And we're also going to pass in an admin instance of the pocket base. So if we want to run any admin tasks or any admin actions, like creating a user, deleting a user, or creating a post, we could use this one right here. Now we could close this file. And in the, in, in the source folder, we could create a new file called hooks.server.ts. So in the hooks.server.ts file, let's import everything. After we finish writing the code, we'll create the environment variables. And now let's create a function called handle. And now for the pocket base instance, we're just going to create a new pocket base instance like so. And we're going to do a try catch block saying that we get the authentication from the cookie and we check to see if it's actually valid. And if it's not valid, because if it's not valid, it will throw an error that we'll catch. We, we just clear the auth store for the pocket base. So then for the pocket base admin, we do the same thing. We create a pocket base instance to the same folder or to the same URL. And then we just authenticate it using the email and password. And if we don't, we just throw an error because most of the logic happens with the admin account. So we can't really risk not having an admin available. So then we're going to set the PB store to the pocket base instance that we created like right here. So then we're going to await the resolve function with the events passed in with the pocket base and pocket base admin passed in through this event. 
So we're going to set the cookies to the all store cookies that we have. And then we're just going to return the response. So now we can close this file. And in the root, we can create a file called env.env. And here we'll create two variables. One's going to be the email and one's going to be the password. And you could create it like so. This is going to be the same email and password you used to create the account in the setup video. Remember, don't forget the email and password. So now I'm going to create them right now. So in the route folder, we can delete this file right here. And then let's create a new file called plus layout .svel. So in here, we just add the script. So we import the main.css file that's in the live folder right here. And then we import the iconify icon package so we can get access to the icons. So then we include the slot right here. And just to test it out, let's go over here. Let's go to the terminal and let's run npm run dev. And let's open up a new terminal instance. Open up the pocket base folder inside of this folder. I mean, inside of this terminal. And we run dot slash pocket base serve. And now let's go to localhost. And now you should see 404 not found and it should be like white text. Thank you guys for watching. Like and subscribe and looking forward to my future videos.